Hi, third graders. My name is Mrs. Feigart, and I am so excited that you are joining me today to read a story called The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman. This is actually one of my favorite stories in our anthology, so I'm really excited that you're here. And before we get started, let's look at our genre. And it looks like our genre is fantasy for this story. So as we know, a fantasy is an imaginative story that could not happen in real life. As we read today, we're going to be looking for story events or settings that are not realistic, and we're going to be looking for characters that act in ways that are not real. Before we get started, let's meet our author, Darcy Pattison. Oliver K. Woodman, the character Darcy Pattison created, has become so popular that students at schools in New York, Indiana, and other states have their own wooden models of him. Whenever they travel, they take Oliver with them and bring back photos and journal entries from his journey. And then our illustrator, Joe Sapita. Joe Sapita does woodworking as a hobby, so when he was illustrating this story, he drew Oliver K. Woodman as if he were really going to build the character out of wood. Author Darcy Pattison loves how Sapita's art turned out. Oliver has no mouth, yet you would swear that he's smiling at us, she says. And if we look at the cover of our story, I am assuming that that is Oliver based on what we just read. And it does kind of look like he's got a little smile on his face there. So let's notice, before we start the story, it looks like Oliver is holding a sign, and his sign says, California or bust. He's standing on the side of the road, it looks like. So based on that, what do you think that sign might mean? Why is he holding a sign that says California or bust? Hmm. Let's think about that as we read, and hopefully we'll find out. Also, when we read, we're going to be thinking about how people can communicate over long distances. Okay, before we get started reading, let's look at our pictures on this page. So I'm noticing, it looks like a little girl is holding what looks like a letter. It's in an envelope and she's giving it to the mailman. And then we see a man down there at the bottom and he is standing by his mailbox and he's reading the letter. Let's see what that letter says. You might notice up in the upper right hand corner we have our date and then the location it looks like where the person is writing from. So it is dated May 10th and it's Red Crest, California. Dear Uncle Ray, please come to visit us this summer. We will go camping we can swim and catch fish. You are my favorite uncle. Please say you will come. Love, Tamika. XOXOXO. If any of you have ever written a letter to a friend or family member, you would know that XOXOXO, when you're writing a letter to someone you care about, it's like hugs and kisses. Okay, so now we know who wrote that letter. It looks like that little girl must be Tamika. And she was writing a letter to her favorite uncle, Uncle Ray. And it sounds like she really wants him to come visit her this summer. Let's look at our next page. It looks like Uncle Ray is making some kind of a wooden man there. Hmm. And his letter is dated May 17th. And it looks like he is writing from Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's what that SC means up in the upper right hand corner. Dear Tamika, I'd love to come to California, but I can't. I will be building kitchen cabinets for some new apartments all summer. But maybe my friend Oliver will come to visit. Love, Uncle Ray. Hmm. Okay. It looks like Uncle Ray is making Oliver out of wood, and he's saying that maybe Oliver will come to California to visit. Very interesting. Let's keep reading. 
Dear Traveler, I am going to see Tamika Schwartz, 370 Park Avenue, Red Crest, California, 95569. Please give me a ride and help me get there. If you don't mind, drop a note to my friend, Raymond Johnson, 111 Stony Lane, Rock Hill, South Carolina, 29730. He wants to keep up with my travels. Thanks. Oliver K. Woodman. Ah, and there we see a picture. Uh, first we see Uncle Ray. It looks like he's putting that letter inside of Oliver's backpack. And then we see a picture of Oliver on the next page, and he is sitting on a rock, and he's holding that sign that we saw on the cover that says California or bust. Hmm. I'm thinking that you're getting an idea of what California or bust might mean. It looks like Oliver is going on a journey to see Tamika in California. How exciting. And then it looks like Uncle Ray wants people to send him a note if they give Oliver a ride so that Uncle Ray can keep track of how Oliver is doing. This should be very interesting indeed. Okay, we have another letter. This one is dated June 1st from Rock Hill, South Carolina. So we know that that one's going to be from Uncle Ray, right guys? Because he lives in South Carolina and Tamika lives in California. Okay, this letter says, Dear favorite niece Tamika, Oliver left this morning. Let me know when he gets there. It should take him a couple of weeks or maybe more. It's hard to say. Love, Uncle Ray. If any of you remember looking at the map of the United States, South Carolina is all the way over on the East Coast, and California is all the way over on the West Coast, and I believe it's about 2,500 miles in between South Carolina and California. So, it sounds like Oliver has quite the distance to cover. Okay, let's look at page 279. This one is dated June 4th, and it says McTavish Plantation outside Memphis, Tennessee. Dear Ray, for two days, Oliver rode in the back of my truck and kept Bert, my Brahmin bull, company. I delivered Bert to his new home and he's settling in, but he'll miss the late night conversations and singing with Oliver. I left Oliver east of the Mississippi River, just outside Memphis, and hurried home to my beloved Amelia. Yours truly, Jackson McTavish. So it looks like Oliver is well on his way to California, and it looks like he made a friend a bull named Bert. Do you guys think that Bert and Oliver were really spending all their time in uh, late night conversations and singing? What do you think? All right, it looks like Oliver has made some more friends, judging by the picture I'm looking at. This one is dated June 8th, and it says Forest City AR. So AR stands for Arkansas. Hi. Mr. OK is OK. Quinn and Sherry went to a basketball game at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee last weekend and brought Mr. OK back. He hung out with us for a couple of days and all the girls liked him better than Quinn. So when Quinn's cousin's boyfriend's aunt was leaving to visit her sick grandfather in Fort Smith, Arkansas, the guys loaded Mr. OK into the aunt's station wagon and sent him on his way. We didn't even get to say goodbye. Cherry, Sherry's sister, for the gang. P.S. If you see Mr. OK again, tell him we all said goodbye. Phew, this letter had a lot to keep track of. So it looks like it was written by Cherry who is Sherry's sister, and there's a lot going on here. So it looks like uh, they're calling Oliver 
Mr. OK, or she's calling Oliver Mr. OK, so that would be probably because his name is Oliver K. Woodman, right? So it looks like they hung out with Oliver for a couple of days. Um, so apparently all the girls liked Oliver better than they liked Quinn. So Quinn was probably not too upset when Oliver had to leave, right? Uh, it says Quinn's cousin's boyfriend's aunt. Okay, Quinn's cousin's boyfriend's aunt. So she is leaving to visit her sick grandfather. So Quinn probably was quite happy to load Oliver into her station wagon and send him on his way. That's funny. Okay, um, so one thing we want to also be thinking about while we're reading is formal and informal language. I don't know if we've talked about this a whole lot, but so formal language is something that sounds more professional. I know my class, we know what it sounds like when we're writing and we want things to be very professional. That's more of a formal language. And then reading this letter from Cherry, would you say this is more formal or informal? And what kind of words make you think that? Okay, let's keep reading. All right, this one, um, and notice it's also dated, or not dated, but it's sent to Raymond Johnson. So the people that are giving Oliver rides are staying in touch with Uncle Ray to let him know how Oliver's doing. So it looks like we're at June 11th, and this one is written from Albuquerque, NM, which means New Mexico. So it looks like Oliver is in New Mexico now. <clears throat> and it says, Hey, Ray, I drive a moving van for Southeast Moving Company. I picked up Oliver at the Arkansas border, then drove west to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, south to Dallas, Texas, northwest to Amarillo, Texas, east to Panhandle, Texas, then west again to Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's an easy fella to travel with. He never needs bathroom stops. He doesn't care where we eat. And he stays awake with me all night. I'm sorry to see him go, but this week the company is sending me east to Wachula, Florida, trucking along Bobby Joe. So it sure sounds like Oliver has been all over the place. Uh, just from this one moving van driver. So they went to, they, or he picked up Oliver at the Arkansas border. They went to Oklahoma City, Dallas, Texas, Amarillo, Texas, then east to the Panhandle, Texas, and then back west. And now they're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Wow. So looks like Oliver got to go all over the place with Bobby Joe. Looks like they, let's see, they started at the Arkansas border, went west to Oklahoma City, south to Dallas, Texas, northwest to Amarillo, Texas, east to the Panhandle of Texas, and then west again to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it seems like he couldn't take Oliver any further because he got sent to Florida, which would be back on the East Coast. And since Oliver is headed to California on the West Coast, looks like that is why Bobby Joe had to leave Oliver in Albuquerque. And if we look at this picture, um, this is pretty funny. Look at that giant hamburger <laughs> that's in front of Oliver. Hmm, he must be really hungry. I love this page because uh, I love how Bobby Joe says that Oliver's an easy fella to travel with. He never needs bathroom stops, doesn't care where we eat, stays awake all night. <laughs> That's just great. All right, our next letter is dated June 28th, and it's Rock Hill, South Carolina, so we know who lives there. This one's from Uncle Ray. Dear Tamika, I've had no word from Oliver in 17 days. I'm starting to worry. What if he is lost? Please call me if he turns up at your house. Love, Uncle Ray. Uh-oh, I wonder where Oliver could be. It's been 17 days since Uncle Ray has gotten a letter from anybody. Okay, 
Next page, July 1st, Redcrest, California. Dear Uncle Ray, no word from Oliver. Are you sure he's really coming? I still wish we could see you. I asked Mama if we could come visit, but she said it costs too much. Daddy says he can't take off work that long. Ever since I asked, Mama keeps looking at family photo albums. When she sees your pictures, she says, My baby brother. Love, Tamika. X-O-X-O-X-O-X. Okay, so Tamika is still really missing Uncle Ray. And so far, no sign of Oliver. What do you guys think happened to Oliver? Let's find out. Oh, it's the 4th of July in this letter. It says July 4th, Salt Lake City, Utah. Dear Raymond Johnson, My grandfather found Mr. Woodman in the middle of the reservation in New Mexico. Poor fella, a mouse was building a nest in his backpack. We don't know how he ended up way out there, and he's not telling. Grandpa brought him to Utah to join me in the 4th of July parade. I got so tired of smiling and waving at the crowds, but Mr. Woodman's brave smile inspired me. I just sent Mr. Woodman off with three sisters. They looked like such nice old ladies, so I know they'll take good care of him. With all my love, Melissa So, Miss Utah. P.S. I've enclosed an autographed picture. Oh, okay, so if we look at the picture, that explains, okay, so that explains why she was having to smile and wave at the crowds, right, guys? So she is Miss Utah, so she is in a parade for the 4th of July, and Oliver got to be in the parade with her, and he actually inspired her to keep smiling and waving. And then it says, a man scratching his head at the sight of Oliver sitting on a rock and Oliver riding with Miss Utah in a parade. Oh, that, that's up at the top there. So poor Oliver, he was found out in the middle of nowhere and there was a mouse building a nest in his backpack. Poor guy. I wonder how he got there. But at least we know he is back on his way. July 27th, en route to San Francisco, California. Ooh, getting closer. Dear Mr. Johnson, my sisters and I had the distinct pleasure of entertaining Mr. Oliver K. Woodman for the past 23 days. You see, we've lived in Kokomo, Indiana all our lives. Until now, we've never been west of the Mississippi River. Our dear Papa died in January and left us an inheritance. We decided to use the money to tour the West this year. While in Salt Lake City, we saw Mr. Oliver in a parade, and after talking it over, we voted to give him a ride. We stopped at a rodeo in Eureka, Nevada, where Mr. Oliver met an old friend named Bert. They had a moving reunion. We are heading south to San Francisco to see the Golden Gate Bridge. So we left Mr. Oliver yesterday in Rough and Ready, California. He should be at Miss Tamika's soon. The Claremont sisters, Agnes, Maggie, and Lucinda. P.S. We had afternoon tea every day. Mr. Oliver has the loveliest manners. And we can see in the picture that Oliver is holding his cup of tea, it looks like, in the back of um, their convertible. <laughs> That's pretty interesting that Oliver got to have a little reunion with, with Bert. Do you guys remember Bert, uh, the Brahmin bull? <laughs> All right. July 28th. Ooh, this is an interesting picture. To Raymond Johnson, R.E., Mr. Oliver K. Woodman. Does anyone know what R-E means when it's written like that? So what that means is regarding. So this looks already like it's going to be a very professionally written letter. Let's see if that's correct. 
Our family, currently on vacation, picked up the above-named person in what I thought was a misguided goodwill gesture. Little did I know how lucky that gesture would be. Sounds very professionally written, guys, right? Very formal. Last night, we pitched tents in the redwood forest. I woke at 3 a.m. to screams of terror. Bears! Your friend managed to frighten them away. He saved our lives. With the deepest and most sincere gratitude, we intend to deliver him to the doorstep of Tamika Schwartz within the next two days. Gratefully yours, Bernard Grape, Attorney at Law. Hmm, that explains why this letter is so formally written. It's written by an attorney. That means a lawyer who's probably used to writing very professionally. Okay, so look at this picture, guys. It looks like it started out for Bernard Grape that he was not really sure why he was picking up Oliver, but it just seemed like the right thing to do kind of thing. And then while they were camping in their tent, bears showed up. And it looks like if you look at the picture, look at how big Oliver's shadow is on the wall over there. So Oliver looked pretty terrifying to that bear. So it looks like Oliver just saved this family. Nice job, Oliver. August 1st, Red Crest, California. We know that that is where Tamika lives. Dear Uncle Ray, guess who came to dinner? Oliver! He is so much fun. We are camping in the backyard tonight. I hear he's not scared of anything, so I'm glad he'll be there. Tomorrow at the river, I'll let him hold my fishing pole while I swim. Guess what else? Daddy and Mama talked it over. We're coming to your house next month, and we'll bring Oliver home. Isn't it wonderful? Love, Tamika. X-O-X-O-X-O-X. P.S. Knock, knock. Who's there? Olive. Olive who? Olive, both you and Oliver. Get it, guys? Like, I love you and Oliver. <laughs> Oliver made it to Tamika. That's so exciting. And it looks like Tamika is going to get to go visit Uncle Ray. So that is pretty awesome. All right. Looks like we are looking now at a, an article out of a newspaper. It says, so if we look at the top there of the little cutout of the newspaper article, it says Rock Hill City News, and it's dated September 15th, and it says Ticker Tape Parade for Hometown Boy by Demetrius Dixon. Oliver K. Woodman will return home today amid national acclaim for his cross-country journey. Woodman began his trip on June 1st in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and arrived in Red Crest, California on August 1st. The Rock Hill City Council announced that a ticker tape parade to honor Woodman will be held today at 10 o'clock a.m., starting at the corner of Main Street and Cherry Road and proceeding down Cherry Road to Cherry Park. Raymond Johnson and Tamika Schwartz Friends of Mr. Woodman will host a picnic in his honor at Cherry Park at noon. At 1 o'clock p.m., Mr. Woodman will show postcards and mementos from his trip. The public is invited. And then if we look at the map up in the upper left-hand corner, we see a map of the United States, and we can tell that Oliver started his journey right here in South Carolina, this orange one right here. And then he went here. That was the first journey he took with his bull friend member, Bert. And then from there, he went right here to this next little dot. And then all the way right here, over here, down into Texas. Remember that when he went kind of back and forth there? 
and he's over here, up here, and over here. And then he went up, over here, and then all the way to California. And then it looks like this is when Tamika and her family flew Oliver back home to South Carolina. Okay, let's look up in the left-hand corner at our map of the United States where it's showing us Oliver's journey and see if we can kind of piece together where he went. It's showing us little dots where he stopped each time. So let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here is where he started in South Carolina with Uncle Ray. And then he went all the way over to the far end of Tennessee. And that's when he met his friend Bert, the bull. And then from there, he went right over here to Arkansas. And that was when Quinn and Sherry went to a basketball game. Remember that? And they brought him back with them to Arkansas. Then from there, he went from this side of Arkansas all the way over to the other side of Arkansas. And that one was with Quinn's cousin's boyfriend's aunt, I believe. <laughs> and then from there, he went over here to about the middle of Oklahoma. And then all around Texas, remember, with the moving van driver, Bobby Joe. So he ended up right here, I believe, in Texas. And then, oh yeah, and then Bobby Joe was able to get him all the way over here to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Then, let's see. Um, not, no one heard anything from him, right, for 17 days. And then he was found over here. Wait, no, he was found in, this is a little confusing. He was found in New Mexico, right? In the middle of the reservation. That's right, by uh, Miss Utah's grandfather found him around about here somewhere. And then he brought Oliver up to Utah so he could join Miss Utah in the parade for the 4th of July. Then from there, the Claremont sisters drove him all the way over through Nevada and then remember he got to see his friend Bert the bull again. And they had a little reunion, so that was cool. And then he, let's see. Oh, they left him in rough and ready California. So I'm thinking that is somewhere probably right here, this little dot. And then uh, remember, the attorney and his family picked up Oliver, and they went camping up in the Redwoods. Oh, yeah, so this is probably the Redwoods here. I'm not quite sure, but um, remember, he got to save them. His big shadow saved them from the, the bear outside their tent. And then from there, they brought him to Tamika in Redcrest, California. And it looks like this white line is when Tamika and her family got to fly Oliver back home to South Carolina. Whew! What an incredible journey indeed. I hope you have enjoyed reading about Oliver's journey just as much as I have. Let's just look at a couple more things here. So... When we're talking about sequence of events, that just means that the order in which things happen in a story. So a lot of times stories will have clues that help us follow the order or sequence. Most of the time we have clues like first, next, last. We're all familiar with those words, right? We use those a lot when we're writing our paragraphs. So in this story, The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman, our clues that help us know when things are happening are the dates on the top of each letter. So that's kind of how we can keep track of when things are happening in this story. Um, so notice 
on this last page here, it told us that he started his journey on June 1st and he arrived on August 1st. So from June to August, so July, August, it took him two full months to get um, all the way across. So that's a little longer than Uncle Ray had thought, but still pretty remarkable for a wooden man, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Okay, and then here's just a little paragraph about what we were talking about earlier about our formal and informal language. So let's just read that real quick. Formal language sounds serious and polite. The words are exact and carefully chosen. So we could think of the letter from that was written by the attorney. Right, guys, that one was definitely more formal and professional sounding. And then informal language sounds more relaxed. It's how friends talk to each other. So if we think about the letter from Cherry, remember that one? That was definitely more informal. So some examples of, of an informal would be words like hung out, the guys, and poor fella. And then some examples of more formal language would be such a um, distinct pleasure. Remember he said, we had the distinct pleasure, right, of entertaining. Okay, so that's more formal language. All right, I'm going to do another video that goes over our vocabulary words. So um, look for that. And I hope you enjoyed reading The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman with me today. I'll see you next time.